Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show with Dr. S, the place to hear stories of heart-driven women creatively living free. Our episodes highlight conversations and insights that support the values of self-care, creative and personal freedom, slower living, happiness, health, and wellness to help you live your absolute best life. To be a part of the movement and join the conversation, step inside our free Facebook group, She Heals the World, and say hello. It brings me great joy to bring you our next episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show. I'm so excited about today's guest, Lucy Parker. Lucy is from the famous plant-based blog, Lucy and Lentils. She lives in Nottingham, England, and she's been lucky enough to take a hobby and passion and turn it into a career by sharing her favorite recipes and seeing other people recreate them in their own homes. Lucy, I'm so excited to have you. Welcome to the show. Hey, oh, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really, yeah, I'm quite honored to be asked to be on this, to be, to be honest. It's, it's amazing. So, how did you get started in this work? Tell us your story. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> probably like most people who start out, it's because I was actually eating quite badly. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I say badly, I, I don't, I don't think of food as good and bad. Um, but I was, well, I wasn't eating a balanced diet. So I wasn't getting enough veg. Um, I was living a very carb based diet. I was at university. So I was drinking a lot of alcohol, going out for freshers and, <laughs> you know, sort of living that whole lifestyle of the very hungover food the next day to sober up. And, you know, Anyway, so I, I couldn't really concentrate at uni. Um, I gained a little bit of weight, which, to be honest, weight gain is not the end of the world. It's normal. But, you know, I didn't really feel good in myself. Um, I, I remember I tried to do a yoga class and I, I literally couldn't even hold myself up in a downward dog position. <laughs> and I just felt like obviously that's absolutely fine because a lot of people, you know, you've got to start somewhere. But I just I didn't feel very strong. And I thought, right, this is the time I need to take care of myself. So I'm going to try and get stronger and take better care of my body and, and actually start, you know, being intuitive with the food that I'm eating. Um, and, and then that kind of led to starting my Instagram account, which, you know, it, it really did just start as, as like a hobby. I didn't really think it was going to go anywhere. It was just my journey to be like, oh, this is what I made today. You know, it's fairly healthy. It's got this, that and the other. And, and then it just sort of exploded, really. It was quite, it was quite fun. Mm, wow. So you stumbled into business. You really didn't intend on being a business owner. No, not at all. I mean, to be honest, um, I've only really just owned, you know, started my business properly within the past year. You know, it, it's um, it's been such a strange journey. Um, so I mean, yeah, it, it's been crazy. So, <laughs> so wait, what did you think you were going to be doing when you grew up? Like, what were you studying in uni? Uh, yeah, so um, I actually studied interior architecture, which is um, it's kind of like interior design, but a little bit more architecture based. Um, and I, I graduated. I got a first class honors degree. I thought, great, I've got this degree. I'm going to go and be a designer. Um, but all the while I was doing my my food stuff. Um, so when I say food stuff, it was at that time, it was it wasn't really what it is now. It was still just sort of photographing on my iPhone and, you know, not really making amazing recipes, just lots of honest trial and errors and sharing it with the people that were following me. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I went, I went to go and work in an architect's firm. I worked there for a year and um, it didn't help that it was a typical nine to five office job where I was taking an hour to commute each way. Um, I, I remember every single lunchtime I was like waiting for the clock to tick to one and I'd be like I'd be like about out of hell I was literally you know trying to fast, uh, walk as fast as I could on my lunch break to try and get as many steps in you know I'd go home and I'd try and go fit everything in fit the gym in fit in Instagram and um it just got a bit too much and I wasn't feeling very motivated or inspired by design um and actually I found myself all I wanted to do was create recipes and actually photograph them um so after a year um you know all my friends were doing a very similar path they were all in their first jobs and you know following their the kind of path that was to be expected um and I just I just threw it all in I just went oh well guys this just isn't for me I don't really feel like I'm doing a very good job and actually I'm not being motivated 
Um, so I, I crazily packed in that entire career that I kind of had, you know, planned out um, and then got a job in an interior design shop. But it was actually as their photographer um, mm. and for their social media channels as well. So it was kind of like a halfway house kind of thing. I didn't fully leave and start my own company because, again, I don't I mean, I was 22 at the time. I did not feel like I had enough experience to start my own company. I, I mean, I'm the least business person you'd ever meet, really, which is quite, you know, ridiculous because now I do own my own business. But um, mm-hmm. I, yeah, so, so I did that. Um, and then once I'd, I'd worked there for I think it was just under a year. Um, unfortunately, the, the whole company went under. Um, but I, I'd been toying with the idea of starting my own company for a long time and, you know, my own business, essentially. Um, and, and you know, when it, when it sort of came through that everyone was going to be made redundant, um, I wasn't scared at all. I actually saw it as a, as a blessing. I was actually really excited because it was going to give me that push mm-hmm. to really go for it, you know, and, and to start Lucy and Lentils and to properly you know, register my business and actually run with it, which has been the scariest thing ever. Um, but also the most exciting and, and, you know, sort of exhilarating. So yeah, it's been, it's been quite a good journey so far. Yeah. How many years ago was that? Um, so that was literally this year. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. So super um, recent. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, I mean, I've been, I have been earning Obviously, I've been monetizing what the work that I've been doing, um, but I hadn't properly registered. You know, that was all sort of on a second income kind of thing. But it was it wasn't until I was made redundant that I thought, right, this isn't going to be a second earner for me. This is going to be my main earner. This is going to be how I, you know, make a living. So I sort of took the plunge and, and yeah, I haven't looked back since, really. Absolutely. Well, it was a good decision, clearly, <laughs> based on how popular you are. So over in England, I mean, in the States, this whole like online world of blogging and being a social media influencer and having brand deals and that whole thing is still kind of like people give you the side eye. Like, what do you do? Is it the same thing over where you live in England now? Or have people kind of warmed up to the idea of knowing that this is a viable option to support yourself from? Um, I, well, a bit of both. I definitely think there is still a lot of eye rolling and a lot of, oh, right, so you just post on Instagram or you just pose or, you know, this kind of this kind of mentality. But then, then again, um, there are people that are really supportive of your work and they actually understand that it isn't just, um, you know, posting a photo on Instagram. It, there's so much work that goes behind it. You know, if you look into kind of well, well, everything from the admin side to having to deal with all of your own bills and your incomes and invoices to actually um, everything that comes with your blog. So all of your SEO have I mean, I today I was spent hours Googling on how to enrich pins and how to um, mm-hmm. you know link my Pinterest to my blog, because actually this is all stuff that, you know, no one really tells you. It's just, you know, you just have to source the right people to do it. And if, if you're like me, you don't have a lot of money to start with to do that. You actually have to do so much to go into it. And actually it takes me hours to create a recipe and to style it and to photograph it. Mm. And obviously it's taken years to build that following. So that's something that a lot of people, if I ever do, it's very rare, but if anyone does sort of give me the impression that they, you know, it's sort of like, oh, so what do you do? And I'll say, well, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a food photographer, but I'm a blogger, essentially. So I share everything on, on my social media. If ever I get a bit of a, you know, oh, right. So so what is that then? I actually love to tell them what goes into it and actually how many years it's taken me to mm. build following and and how respectful I am of everyone that does follow me. Because I think that's another thing is that they think that they, they almost have this pre preconception that you're going to be almost like um a bit of a drama queen and you know just kind of you know oh I'm so famous not at all not at all it is so humbling to actually to actually look at something and think oh my goodness you know 97,000 people follow the work that I do mm-hmm. um and it's so inspiring to actually push you on and to go okay well for every one person that might roll their eyes um, that night, you know, however, however many followers you've built or, you know, whatever community you've built around you, that should be the thing that reminds you to, to ignore any eye roll that you get. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. How inspirational is that? <laughs> Thank you. I am sure we all have experienced that. And yeah. to hear the message of like every follower that you have, it cancels out any eye roll that you can get. It's like, yeah. it just reminds you to keep on pushing. Yeah. So, 
Um, all right. So I, you've talked about a lot of hurdles and, um, and I know that our audience has experienced those. You mentioned the hours that you spend Googling, you know, how to enrich a pin for pinches yeah. and how to set a blog up and how to yeah. food style and the whole bit. But if you could kind of drill down to one single hurdle that has kind of taken the cake as you've been in this building process on your way to getting the success that you have, what would that be? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to get kind of deep with this one. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Hurdle. Um, it might sound so cliche, but it's dealing with your own self-doubt. Um, so this is something that every creative or every person who's trying to share something online, especially, um, it is so difficult to listen to your own negative thoughts and say, oh, no, no one's going to no one's going to like that. Don't post it. Or, oh, no, that's really embarrassing. Don't be that honest. Or, you know, don't don't put yourself on Instagram stories because, you know, people won't like you or, you know, don't don't try and sell this ebook. No one's going to buy it. You know, it, it's those kind of negative thoughts. And if I'd have listened to every negative thought, I never, ever would have set myself up as as my own company. And um, because. I, all the time I mean even now I worry what if the work doesn't come in you know if I have a if I have a few days where my inbox is quite quiet you know I'm, I'm talking to my boyfriend I'm like right that's it I'm gonna have to get a job because I'm gonna fail this is a you know blah blah, blah. and and it's actually it's actually taking the taking a step back and saying okay is it really as bad as I'm making it out to be no and <laughs> um, if I do post something and only 10 people like it is that really the end of the world no um but actually you know that never actually happens of course the emails do always come in and people do always interact with the work that you create and the message that you're sharing so I think the biggest hurdle and I, I haven't mastered it <laughs> I'm very honest in that case is not listening to the negative thoughts and actually you know, accepting that they're there and saying that's fine, that could happen. But if it does, you know, are you still going to have a roof over your head? Yes. So therefore, don't worry about it. You know, as long as you're not offending anyone um, or hurting anybody, there's nothing bad that can happen from it. So you just have to, you know, just just follow your gut and go for it. But I mean, I'm saying this. This is definitely something that I need to take my own advice because there are certainly days where I don't take that advice. Right. Very negative. Um, but yeah, I think that that is honestly the hardest hurdle. And I think that speaking to a lot of people that started their own companies or they work freelance it is is the scariest thing is listening to your own thoughts and thinking about the bad things that could happen. Um, but you just have to ignore it. <laughs> yes, ignore it and turn it around. I was just talking to a friend the other day about having a thought journal because I love that like you're so conscious of the thoughts that are coming up and you just kind of push them out. But there's so many of us that have the thoughts and we're not even conscious. We just automatically take action that mm -hmm. doesn't serve us because the thoughts are like running our life. And so I was saying to a friend of mine, like, we need to just write it down. Like, I can't do this or I feel insecure in this area or nobody's going to like my post or nobody's going to open my email newsletter that I sent this week. Just write mm -hmm. it down so that you can really see on paper what's going on in your brain and then you can turn it around and choose differently make a better choice and so i i love that you said that i think so many people are going to relate to that right there oh, thank you well i think a piece of it where you have a little bit of an advantage is that you are really good at your work and so <laughs> it's unlikely that somebody's not going to like something that you post or something that you write and i would love for you to share with our audience how they can get good at their work too um i think that there's a lot of wellness entrepreneurs and even personal brands who know that you have to have a social media presence you have to kind of learn photography and if you're doing food stuff and wellness stuff you gotta know a little bit about food styling to really start to get your brand out there and I know you have some tips for us on how they can do that so can you share with us how to improve your photography and food styling for those entrepreneurs out there who want to build a social media brand of course of course well first of all thank you that is like the kindest thing ever I mean it, honestly it's so it really is so humbling to hear someone say that your work's good because like we we're just saying it's very easy to think that your work isn't good and compare yourselves so that'll be my first tip don't compare yourself ah, <laughs> yes doing. you know take inspiration from it if someone else is fantastic at photography Take a look at the composition, take a look at how they've taken the photo and say, OK, well, what? why is it great? Why do I think that that looks delicious? Or what are the colours like? Or what are the backgrounds like? You know, don't don't fear other people's work. 
actually take inspiration from it. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying copy it. That's obviously wrong. But it's very important to, to understand what it is about a photo that you like. Um, so a great a great place to start is, is Instagram, but Pinterest as well. I mean, if you just type in any kind of, you know, vegan or vegetarian or whatever kind of recipe, you know, you'll, you'll be flooded with absolutely beautiful images. Um, so I love to get inspiration from from channels like that. And save them all, you know, create a board of food styling inspiration. Um, and, but for me, the simplest, the simplest kind of starting tips I'd recommend, because again, this was a big learning process for me. I did everything from my iPhone, um, which you still can do. So the, the first tip is natural light. Um, always, always try and use a window or, you know, a, a sort of diffuse light. So you can do this by just putting, um, like a, a really almost see through cloth over your window or, or just sort of, to, you know, put it a little bit away from the window to get the best natural light. Um, try not to use false lighting because it makes everything look a little bit yellow. Um, this is something that is time and time again. I don't mean to interrupt you, but is this also for like the halo light users? Is that what it's called? Because I have a halo light and it looks good, but what? still doesn't compare to the natural light. But I use it as a backup. Am I OK with doing that? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to winter time. I fully respect that a lot of people still have to juggle a full time job or they're still, you know, juggling other things like feeding the you know, kids and getting everything, you know. So I understand that by the time that it comes to the, you actually having your creative outlet, it might be sort of six, seven o'clock at night. And um, so, yeah, you, if you can get away with something like a halo light, which actually uses like a, a blue white light, um, that's definitely better. Just stay away from yellow lighting because that always makes food look awful. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a good tip. OK. Um, and when it comes to styling, something that I try to say to people is try to tell a story of how your food has got to the table. So um, if I was shooting, so I've just posted a photo of, of some um, avocado pesto and I've got, you know, the half the avocado on the table. Um, there's the linen cloth that I've sort of put under the plate because it's really hot. Um, I've got a few forks and spoons out. I've maybe put a few um, little seeds dashed around the table. Um, and there's the basil pot in the background with all of the pesto. So it tries to tell a little bit of a story because we love visual aids. When we look at something, we quite like to understand how it's been made and, and little cues of, you know, if there's some sesame seeds on the table that might have, you know, fallen out of the pot it just makes it look a lot more natural um so that's it that's another tip um and also think about your color composition um if you have food that's quite brown and um, because this is something i really struggle with if ever i'm photographing chocolate or pasta and there's not a great deal of color um try to think about adding color in different ways so could you put a beautiful pot of basil or could you put some fresh you know cherry vine tomatoes um, on the side of the plate or you know could you introduce color in different ways and mm. um, I, I respect that that's you know, probably not good for chocolate because you don't really want tomatoes next to chocolate but get <laughs> creative you know put like a pink plate underneath maybe or you know introduce color in different ways because when we're looking at food we love food to look inviting and colorful and vibrant um, mm. so another another big tip that I see all the time um, and I, I used to do um, the backgrounds. So try to use, um, you know, really kind of distorted or really um, distilled colors. So calming colors, maybe like a gray or a white background. Um, so that actually it's the food and the, the plates and the ingredients that pop on the on the screen. So when I'm looking at something, if there's a really jazzy table underneath, you know, maybe they've got like a mosaic tile or it's a kitchen countertop and it's all speckledy instantly your eyes are taken away from the food and they're looking at the background instead um so a great tip you know even if it's like old reclaimed wood or you know an a an a1 piece of card just blot on some paint it could be anything just gray and white and blot it around on the page and actually you know that will create a really beautiful background for you to put all of this colorful food on so that hopefully those will be some good tips. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are amazing tips. And I think what's so interesting about everything you shared is that in our mind, we think that, you know, when we take a picture of our food, we feel like it has to look exactly what it looks like when we're eating it. You know, it's like, I just took this out the oven. And so 
boom, I'm going to take the picture. But we don't really think about, like you said, all the visual aids and actually styling the food before you take the picture or even just making something for it to be styled so that you can take a picture. And I think that that mindset shift is going to be huge for a lot of people. It's like you do not have to take a picture of the spaghetti as soon as it comes out of the pot. Like you can actually like transfer it to a brighter dish and sit it by the window and decorate the the board that it's sitting on, you know, really dress it up so that it is appealing to people and so that it draws more eyes to the actual photo. I totally love those tips, Lucy. I think that was really helpful for folks. Thanks for sharing them. Yeah, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, you have shared your story with us. You've given us some amazing tips for photography and for our blog and for food styling. And so I'm wondering, now that you have gotten the success that you have, if you could look back and give your 10-year younger self any piece of advice, what would it be? Oh, oh God, there, I mean, a minute, where do I start? There are lots of, lots of advice tips I would give myself. Um, I think... I think the main one um, would probably be, oh, God, it's so difficult now that you've asked me because there are so many things that I've needed to have learned. Um, I think it would be to probably travel a little bit more. So don't worry about following the traditional route of, you know, university straight into a job. Um, I travelled around Italy for a month and honestly, it was the best month of my entire life. I've never been more inspired by food. And actually, I think if I could give myself some advice, it would be try to take in as much inspiration from food from different countries and don't be scared to kind of, you know, chase it and to to explore and discover new recipes and new ingredients. Because um, that's something that I'm doing now, but I, I wish I'd started a little bit earlier. Um, so yeah, I think that's quite a nice one because it's not too focused on, you know, on, you know, on work. Because that comes naturally, all of the boring admin bits, that comes eventually. But I think <laughs> travel is such an important one. So, yeah, I think I'd have given myself that little tip and advice. Beautiful. Yeah, I always hear travel is the best education. And so if any time you can travel, I think, you know, your any job would be enriched based on your experiences. Nice. How can our people find you? For those that want to learn more about the work that you're doing, uh, take a look at the quality of content that you're posting, where can our audience find and connect with you? Um, so my main sort of channel, my main creative outlet is Instagram. Um, so it's uh, at Lucy underscore and underscore lentils. Um, and then my blog is www. W, I can't speak now. www.lucyandlentils.co.uk um, I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest. But again, that's all just Lucy and Lentils. So I'm pretty much the same across everywhere. It's just Instagram. You have to put those stupid underscores. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure they'll find you. Don't worry. So. <laughs> quite an odd name so people aren't really going to be uh, stumbling upon anyone else um i'm also on youtube i've just started to create recipe videos which is a very very new area for me so um yeah bear with me whilst there's probably lots of camera shaking and dodgy dodgy video quality um but yeah so so lucy and lentil's pretty much across everywhere well thank you so much for sharing your story with us lucy and i hope to have you back on the show have oh, a great week thank you so much thank you well, there you have it. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. And as always, for more resources, as you continue to live out your beautiful mission of healing the world and grow your beautiful business, you can head to www.shehealstheworld.com forward slash freebie to see what new resources I have in store for you. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend. And I can't wait to see you at the next episode.